Hi, everybody. How you been? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to VA3FUC. My name is Ron. I am the host of this channel. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Once again, it's been, um, I've been excited to bring this, uh, content to you guys. I know you guys have been waiting for it for a long period of time. The Alliance HD1 review is coming. I just ran into a lot of problems with this radio, which is going to be discussed in this review. But all in all, I have a lot to say about this radio. <laughs> I'll get into that in the review. Another thing that's coming up is a build video. I'm working on building something. I've got finally got my parts in from Amazon. I'm waiting for this part right here. These are SMA connectors. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I was waiting for them and the fun of that. But I got all the parts here ready to go. And... uh Will it work? Will it not work? I don't know. Technically, on paper, yes, it should work. But there's a few things that need to be filled in the holes. I got to fill in a couple more holes, and then we'll be ready to do it. Also, I was posting a lot about this last time on my video. And I said I'll have a place where you guys can go in and uh, order it. Well, I've gotten a price point that, I've that I like. I've gotten the... Um, information set up so all that will be sent in soon look in the descriptions down below you'll have all that information right there another thing i want to talk a little bit about in this video is something i saw on amateur radio crash course and his talk about making amateur radio more available to people and this got me thinking really hard and I thought to myself, well, yeah, I understand where he's coming from. Because when you think about it, how many people are interested in amateur radio? The people that are around you are. Because those are the people that get into amateur radio. Are people that are like-minded like us. Love to tinker. Love to play with stuff. Love to try new technology. This is old technology. But it's newer. I, I, I know it's a weird way of thinking about it, but it is. And when I think about, you know, the joy I had when I made that first contact, this is even before the internet was as big as it was. Making that contact over the air was immensely pop, was immensely, wow, that got that far. How did that happen? So stuff like that has made my mind a little bit more open to the fact that, you know, yeah, sure, we have the internet, but what happens when the internet goes down? What happens when we don't have the phone or we can't get out to the internet? We got the amateur radio. We can get out. They can't. And in all honesty, like, I mean, APRS is a, is a interesting idea, but like I said, realize on the internet, that's a problem. But HF does not like two meters. We can't get far. Okay. Two meters is just like site to site. We know that already. But HF is not. HF can go pretty far or not too far, depending on what the sun does to us. And we're, we are kind of tied down to the sun. Unless there's sunlight, we can't really do much about it. So what I'm planning on doing is, um, I want to ask you guys, are you promoting amateur radio? And if so, how are you promoting it? I'd like to know what's going on in your neck of the woods to promote this hobby, because I think there's a lot of people that would get hyped on this hobby if they knew how to get into the hobby. Myself, right now, I'm debating on how I'm going to do my studying for the amateur radio license for Canada again. Yes, I'm rewriting my basic course. The reason I'm rewriting my test is so I can get the 80%. My last test, I scored 74, I think it was. And yeah, it was just a little bit off. A couple questions I doubled on myself. I went, no, that doesn't sound right. It's this. And I think that's where I goofed up because I didn't go with my first choice. And I always know my first choice is the best choice to go with. But like I said, I'm going to start studying again, write my test again. And hopefully this time I can get 80% or better. And 
you know what? There's going to be some times when I'm going to do some tricks that I've uh, learned about. And we're also going to look at uh, some of the study material. This is more for a person that's in Canada that wants to get their license. But it may help you guys in the States, too. Because there's going to be some questions there that are just going to be only for Canada. But there's going to be some questions there where you're going to think, hmm, low pass, high pass. What's a low pass? What's a high pass filter? And you start learning this more and more as we're going to go forward. I'm also going to talk about websites that can help you uh, study for the Canadian one versus the American one, because I really don't know what you guys have to do in Amer- in the States. So I do apologize. Anyone in the States that's out there, tell me, where do you go to study for your tests? I'm a little curious because we were thinking of doing it on two ways. So it's going to be me just studying the book. And writing the test, just doing the test over and over again. But my other, my other ham, who also runs a channel on Twitch, and I run a channel on Twitch. So we were talking about maybe combining the two Twitches, combining his Twitch, my Twitch, and my VA3FUC channel into doing a video with us both studying over and over again and helping each other learn this a little bit better so we were looking at that too as an uh, as another option so let me know what you guys think about that if you would be interested in watching us uh, study and uh, participating and helping us get to that point because really i do want to hit that 80 percent or better just so i can get my hf privileges and get on higher bands and who knows that might turn into me doing a lot of potas maybe not might turn me into doing a lot of uh, outside projects like building antennas that we can throw up into a tree and destroy tree limbs. That's always fun, right? <laughs> but anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Comment down below. Remember, Ooh. like, subscribe, ring the bell if we do do these live videos. But it also tells you when I go and put out a new video like today. And because this is a hobby more than it is a job for me, you're going to find that I'll come on and I'll disappear and I'll come on again and disappear. But if we can become regular, like say, if you guys want the live streams and the live streams can be very easily done. And now that I have an account that allows me to do that, I like to bring us into the field and have us all talk and, you know, discuss stuff. Anyways, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you did like the content, please, like, please, please, please hit that like button. You you have no idea how much that helps. And remember, everybody, have fun with this. It's a hobby. And 73.